Oh, really? It's going to be one of those, huh? I don't know. It's actually not a hot subject, but it feels, I was, it feels right to put I was on. pretty hot there in the middle of it when I was uh, screwing up ignitions. <laughs> That's right. It might be hot. Yeah. I might open up to you and tell you some truths, bro. Oh. Really? What? You're going to chew ice in the microphone and you're the producer? Are you freaking kidding me? That's, okay. All right. We're not starting out good. We got the producer in here chewing ice in the microphone. All right. It's Saturday night. It's been a long day. We'll talk about it. All right. Silence for edit, edit, Silence. edit. All right. Silence, fools. Lurch. You. I have just one thing I've been wanting to say to you. What's that? You're a lion dog face pony soldier. What does that even mean? Chew on it. Chew on it. Should we cold call Oscar? Well, let's do it. Let me see. We haven't done a cold call. It's been years well, since we've been, been a, a long time. Let's call Oscar. One of the last ones I can recall was we called Rob while he's working. Yeah. Harassed him for a little while. Here we go. Let's see if we can. Oscar has no idea. Let's see if we can ring him up on the phone. Make sure the volume's up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Might be interrupting his date night. Mm. Are you serious? Is he going to screen us? Hi, uh, you reached Justin. Leave me a message. Thanks. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Oscar. I just wanted to tell you that uh, I have... Oh, he's calling back. Oh, oh, here oh we, go. we got some action. And an accept. Hey, bro. Are you calling me on the podcast? Hey, oh, no, he we're not. Smart. No, we're not. I just wanted to tell you that... Uh, <laughs> no, uh, seriously, dude. I just wanted to admit something to you as a friend that uh, I've been lately having problems with my doohickey. <laughs> and it's embarrassing to talk about. And you laughing at me, the mirror point that you're laughing at not me. Not very supportive. Not it's, very listen, supportive. No, no. Your, your lever, your <laughs> lever is fine. It's the <laughs> tension of your spring is good. You have no tension on your spring. <laughs> oh, I knew you'd, I knew you'd be a good one to cold call. Yes, you are on the podcast. Oh, dude, that's so cool. And you are live. And I, I knew you'd appreciate the doohickey thing. Uh, well, I mean, I, was it harder than Matt's shaft? Oh, I didn't say that right. Oh, uh, it was, was not, it harder to put in not. than Matt's shaft. Oh my God, dude. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, dude, we did a funny intro, but, uh, uh, yeah, I figured I'd call you about the doohickey. We got the doohickey in and, uh, now we filmed it. So I'm ready to do your bike, dude. I'm ready to do your dude, bike. Dude, I can't wait till my doohickey is done in your garage. It's dude. It's true. And, uh, it's a good feeling when your doohickey's being fixed. I mean, it, it's not, I know. it's kind of pleasurable. You, you don't want your lever to break. No, like, no. And like when you're out and you're getting it, you know, like you're going to it in the mountains and then your lever breaks. I mean, and then you exactly. have a spring tension. Yeah, right. Hey, <laughs> dude, at my age, my doohickey is the only thing I got going for me. That's the, <laughs> la that's the last thing I got. So. <laughs> oh, dude, you're awesome. Thanks for playing along. We just wanted to cold call you on the podcast. So, <laughs> I wish you were here. Yeah, I wish I was there, fellas. Well, thanks for calling. Yeah. All right. Later, bro. Later. All right. See you All right guys. Bye. All right. That was a cold call to Oscar. And if you don't know what the doohickey we're talking about, today we filmed a project on the uh, Kawasaki KLR650 Adventure Dual Sport Bike. It's a long problem with the balancer tensioner chain, right? Yes. Balancer tensioner chain, right? Did I say it right? It's the, yes, the, yes, yeah, the balancer chain. Balance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Balancer chain, chain, chain tensioner. tensioner. Balancer chain tensioner is basically like a primary chain tensioner. But uh, anyways, it's a long uh, problem that ca that the KLRs have had for a long time, but it's a pretty cheap fix and we did all the labor. It's, it's quite involved. Nonetheless, we filmed it today. And yes, the part is called a doohickey. Uh, it's Eagle Manufacturing, a guy named Eagle Mike, who has made a living off uh, you know, little KLR stuff. He's making other bike stuff too, but um, it's an ongoing joke. So uh, that video uh, will be coming out on the YouTube channel eventually. We filmed it today. We did a doohickey on my bike. I have a new doohickey. Do I feel like a new man 
with a f- proper functioning doohickey and uh, never know what's going to happen. It's in more this. robust than your original doohickey. Totally. It's, it's stronger. It's tougher. It's got more tension. Yeah. Oh, for? nicely said, dude. Nice. Should we cold call anyone well, else or should we just get into this episode? Let's roll. All right. We're not going to cold call anybody else, but hopefully, hopefully that was uh, bringing it back just a little bit old school, doing some cold calls. We got to do that more. Remind me. Yeah. I need to cold call people. Don't forget Bikeaholics, the 2020 Patron Sturgis Meetup Reminder, Thursday, August 13th, 2020 is when it will be. I'll be there. Lurch be there. A ton of the Law Abiding Biker crew, in fact, will be missing very few. It will be from 9 to 6 p.m. is the time frame you want to plan out in the greater Sturgis area, of course. You must be signed up as an official mid-level or above patron member of Law Abiding Biker Media prior to May 13th, 2020. That's three months prior to the event to make sure that you're committed and you're a contributing member. The deadline for sign up June 1st, 2020 by midnight Pacific Standard Time. The official sign up form, the only sign up form, the only place you can sign up is over at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash 2020 meetup. That's 2020 meetup. Signing up in the private Facebook group on all that, that means nothing. That was just to notify you. You need to head over to that link because we got to vet you. We got to check it out and to get you on the list and all that kind of stuff. Now, very important. Once you sign up on the official form over there, you're going to get two emails. We need you to get both emails. The first email is going to be thanks for signing up. The second email you want to look for, sometimes they end up in the spam junk folder. So make sure you check your email junk spam folder. You must uh, opt into the email list. We're going to get you on that email list. That is the official way that we will communicate with only those that have officially signed up, have been vetted and authorized and all that kind of stuff and that are on the official list. That is how we will tell you when we get very close to the event, the exact details of time, location, kickstands up. And that's obviously uh, how we always do it just uh, so that we make sure the people that signed up are the only people that are at the official event and it gives us a proper head count. All right. Oh, yeah. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Lurch, go strapless with a Rick Rack quick attack luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash store. Get our, check out our full line of Rick Rack bags and racks. I got to interrupt you for a second. Please do. I'm uh, thirsty. So I, I had something to bring over for you today and I forgot. My uh, house is a mess right now because we're redoing our kitchen. So we've t- we tore our kitchen apart, took all the stuff out of the cabinets, and it's in my spare room. And I had a box in my spare room that I was going to bring. As, it's a gift for you uh, from Pablo Calcerada. When I saw his name, it, it jogged my memory. I went, oh, crap, I forgot to bring that gift over. Dude, how long have you had that gift? I've, I've had this thing since, well, it's been Holy- at least a month been at least a month. How did you end up with it? He has my home address, so he mailed it to me. I'm tracking. It is a flag that flew over the Capitol, and it comes with a uh, certificate of authenticity uh, uh, congratulating us on our seven years of, of lab. Dude, really? And I forgot to bring it. But when I saw his name in there, I thought, oh, I got I to gotta mention that to you. Dude, that is so yeah. freaking sweet, dude. It's badass. So it was a flag? That's flown over the Capitol. They fly a flag every day. And then, and you can get your hands on him, but dude, him working over there. I'm, I'm not sure if he wants me to say where he works, but he works over there and he's yeah, able to get, yeah. his, get his hands on. I, I know. Yeah. He got his hands on one that flew over the Capitol. So it comes with a, a certificate of authenticity and America. America. Oh, dude. Yeah. And I, I, I got you a little uh, case to put it in and yeah, it's awesome. I was going to just bust out a box uh, while we were filming and surprise you with it, and I completely forgot. Dude, but thanks for telling me. Yeah. Because that was random, and we weren't expecting that. So thank you, Pablo. I look forward to uh, getting that. Yeah. Dude, we got to figure out what we're going to do with that in I, here. I put it in a case for you. You can hang it, or you can oh, set it that's on That's what a, you were saying. Okay. Yeah, you, the, uh, the, the flag's on top, certificate's underneath, and you can <sighs> set it on a bench, or we can hang it on the wall. I would suggest hanging it on the wall. It's going up somewhere in the Law Abiding Biker studio. Pablo, very involved. Also, the guy that, yeah, made our intro and one of our intros and outros. So next time I'm over, I'll bring it and we'll do a live Facebook and show it off. Very cool. Yeah, live a uh, YouTube. Yeah, That's, you know what I meant. I know what you meant. What, I do know what you meant. A live computer thingy. There you go. Yeah. 
2020 Sturgis uh, sponsorship booth reminders, guys. This is for everybody, uh, not just patrons. This is open to the entire public, including patrons. Meet the lab crew. And there's going to be all of us mostly there. Um, everybody's in. We got special shirts made. We're going to be there hanging out. Um, it's open to the public Tuesday, August 11th, 2020 at Black Hills Hardy Davidson in Rapid City, uh, South Dakota, outside Sturgis, about 30 minutes, of course. They have a huge uh, a bunch of booths at Black Hills. Rick Rack booth, we will be Rick Rack from 11 to thir- uh, 11 o'clock. Let me use not military time here, uh, 24 hour time, 11 to 1. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then we will go right from there, 1 p.m., maybe a 15-minute break somewhere in there, but about 1 p.m. to uh, 3 p.m. at the Ciro 3D booth. So uh, we would love to meet you in person and uh, shake your hand and and say thank you for being an audience member and thank you for supporting us. So if you want to come uh, check us out uh, uh, and we can uh, check you out, not in a weird way, uh, head over there. <laughs> head over there. Yeah. Not in a weird way. Not in a weird way. Hey, back all Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Hardy Davidson and a brand new line for the all new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. I like gold. I like it. Top quality, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com for slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Shall we do this? Speaking Lurchy. of Pablo Calcerata. Mm-hmm. Speaking of. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99%. Large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history by being here, by listening, by being in the live chat, by being here as a patron. You're part of what we call the hashtag biker revolution that's right lurch and i have just one question for you what are you waiting for bikeaholics mount up let us thank you on another wild ass ride there you go ryan erlacher here your host of the law abiding biker podcast and your high tech redneck there you go we got an awesome episode for you guys thanks everybody for being in there this is a live episode uh patron member only and of course it'll come out in podcast format later but they're getting it months and we're able to see who's in here and chat um so make sure you get uh signed up here in 2020 as a patron member uh rick wheeler uh john mal uh man light as i know he's told us how to say that sorry uh ricky rides not sure exactly who that is um Let's see, uh, Jackson. Yep, Jackson's in there. Live a day. Live a day. Live a day. Good memory. Uh, Pablo, of course, David Schwartz from Israel. All that. Yeah, we got a chat blowing up here. Love it. Love it, guys. And uh, we'll try to communicate with you as much as we can uh, in the prayer. And I was going to say, and it's fine. And we've said it in the past. If you're a different patron member or a newer patron member, if you, you can go to uh, YouTube and change your name to your real name. Um, you don't have to, but it's nice to know when we're in the chat, like who are patron members by name. Cause we can't track you by like Ricky rides, but it's fine. Um, but just know that a lot of guys over time have changed that if they're going to be in the chat a lot. So oh, we would like goes. Rick Fancy. Okay. Very good. Rick Fancy. So thank you. Fantasy. Uh, Fantasy. So thanks for being Finicky. in there. Yep. So <laughs> j- uh, Stop you said it. Here, right? I didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys, uh, yeah, you just know, uh, uh, that you can do that, uh, Rick, if you choose, um, so it's a lot easier of guys, for us. It's hard it to is. remember, but he's, uh, next time you get in there, and... I won't remember Ricky Wright. No, we'll forget it. You'll have to tell me again. And, and so it's fine. No worries there. Uh, so we got an awesome episode for you guys. Uh, today's main topic. We do have some stuff we want to talk about, but it's going to be, we have a great story to tell. Lurch has a great story to tell. All right. And it's about the Harley ignition alignment, mm-hmm. all about it, removal. Um, and we'll talk about a video and some other stuff. It's definitely good information and we hope it's useful to you guys uh, from what we talk about. But a lot of it's going to be fun too, because it's talking about what actually goes on behind the scenes here. Um, and that, you know, it's not always exactly perfect. It like, is by the time it's edited. It is sometimes by the time we it's have edited. our little issues too as we're yes. going through things. And we're, sometimes we're we put learning. them on bloopers. Sometimes yeah. we put them on bloopers. Yeah. We're not, we don't try to hide stuff. No. We just, and this is stuff that happens in even people that aren't filming. Right. You know, yeah. at their shop. It was an uh, accident that happened not once, but twice. <laughs> but we learned something. Well said. We learned something through it. You're able to, to solve the problem and then film it. And you've already saved several people a major headache. Yeah, so... Is look, that enough of a teaser? Yeah, it's a Everybody's good teaser. Everybody's wondering what we're talking about right now. Perfect. I got the uh, 
perhaps blue ribbon sweatbands on tonight just in case it's been a long day i might sweat i don't know i don't know but it won't be going down my wrists if i do lurch your hands will be dry straight up dude all right let's uh mention uh what do we got before we get into our main oh that is going to be our new video so um with that said let's just roll what do you say we roll oh i wanted to do this you know we love our sponsors we love our patron members also we want to thank the following people for becoming patron members rich nowakowski of stevensville maryland charles durnill of columbus indiana and jim manley of alito texas he is a top tier member Nicely done. Lawabidingbarker.com forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Pledge a certain amount, purpose content, no risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers, videos. You get live broadcasts. I say videos, live t-shirts and stickers. You get uh, into the private Facebook group. You get live video broadcasts and chat early. You get podcasts, episodes months early, access to premium videos, all kinds of benefits here in 2020. 20. So uh, we would love to get to know you better. So uh, get signed up. It is uh, the way we continue this uh, heading on down the road with this uh, this here podcast and YouTube channel. Mm. So let's just, uh, now this wasn't that long ago, but let's, uh, let's take it back, Lurch. I'm going to need those armbands because I'm going to start sweating talking about this. <laughs> it was uh, quite stressful for me. So why don't you set it up and what we were doing and kind of how the day progressed. And uh, this is a true biker story. So we hope it uh, inspires you, makes you cry, makes you laugh, makes you frustrated, makes you feel sorry for Mostly frustrated. I went home frustrated and I'll get to the, to why, but we were uh, doing a film project. I don't know if you, I don't think it's out yet. Is it? You're probably still editing it. I haven't seen it. Oh yeah. The, oh the handlebar job. Yeah, because that's a for sale video. Yeah. I edited oh, that you did, right yeah, away. That's right. Okay, and, that's why. Oh, so we weren't even filming that. Weren't what? No, we didn't even film his. What were we? Was it grips? No. So okay, here's the. That's here, what it was. Yes, we were doing heated yeah. grips. Heated grips on his bike, but at the same time, we threw some bars on it. So uh, we were up, updating our heated grips video, which is all revamped mm-hmm. now. We needed new footage. Uh, that's right. But we did it in the midst, and we didn't need new handlebar footage, right. so we didn't film that part. Thank yeah. you for cleaning that up. Mm. And what year is his bike? Is it a 1920? It's a 20. 19? Uh, 19. 19. So right. He bought it, and he bought it at the end of... Well, he bought it... Yeah, 19, because he bought it at the end of last year's trip. Yeah, he bought it in to, our 2019 trip. Yeah. It could have been a 20. Is now I can't 20? remember. Crap. Well, whatever. You look that up. Know. It's a 19 or 20. Anyways, he got a, a new Street Glide. And uh, we wanted to uh, freshen up our um, heated grips video. It's, it, we hadn't done it on a newer bike, and we wanted to get some 4K footage and all that good stuff. So we had his bike torn down, and part of that job is removing the ignition. And uh, you, you have to be careful when you take out the ignition. You need, you need to pull that um, ignition switch straight up. And uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, been a long day. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention, wasn't uh, concentrating on what I was doing. But as I pulled it out, I... I turned it a little bit after. So it, there's, you'll be able to clean it up and kind of explain what the inside looks like, but there's, there's different steps in there and that uh, ignition fits in there in a certain way. And you can get those tumblers for lack of a better words out of order. And then you can't get the ignition back in. And if you do, sometimes it gets locked up. So that's what I did. I pulled his ignition switch out and uh, had turned it, you know, partway through removing it. I didn't pull it straight up. Now, on top of that, <laughs> then we went over to your bike to figure out uh, what we had going on there. And for whatever reason, I pulled it out the exact same way and screwed yours up. Mm. We were able to get Lee's figured out and get all the tumblers back in line. Um, but we had jacked yours up so bad, we couldn't fix it. So I left here about 2 o'clock in the morning after finishing. The, after the starting work. at like 7 in the morning. 7 in the morning to about 2 in the morning. Because that was a long day. We it was knew a long day. Handlebar day is a long day. Mm, yes. And uh, we were able to get Lee's all back together, uh, get it realigned, but we weren't able to get yours aligned. So I left here that night at 2 o'clock in the morning thinking I had screwed up your ignition and we're never going to be able to fix it. You were pretty stressed. A little bit. You felt bad. A little bit. I mean, yeah. I mean, Lee's rode his bike down here, so we needed to get it put back together. He was planning we got to lucky stay in the night anyways. His. Yeah, we just got lucky. His wasn't too jacked up. I was able to get the, the uh, everything lined back up with uh, – I think I was able to use a flat plate screwdriver and get it. It was a file. File, that's right. It was was a a tapered file. Remember that? I want you to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. It just happened. We were looking for the tools, 
Uh, we got online and started looking, and there's a gentleman that showed how to take some copper um, tubing and smash it down and put some tape on it, make this little key. Uh, there is an actual, alignment tool. There actually is an alignment tool that you can put in there and line all those um, uh, cylinders or which we have now stuff up. Yeah, um, so we were able to get his straightened out. We found that that file was the right size to go in there and turn the tumblers and get it all lined up. Uh, but yours was so jacked up, we had it locked in there. We could not get it back out. Mm-hmm. Now. My uh, after alerts to this, and you guys could run into this problem. So it is actually, uh, it's a story, but it's super important information too. We learned a lot through this process. Um, the funny and that's what we do here. First time I've ever taken one out. I've taken plenty out. I, I know. It was, and so it was weird that so it happened. So have a lot of guys. Weird that it happened. And even stranger that happened twice. I think it was just such a long day. And um, and you were in a hurry. In a hurry trying At to get At the end done. of the day, you want oh, to get yeah. home. Yep. You're done. You're spent. Mm-hmm. Um not focusing like I should have been. Right, right. And that happens. That's working on bikes, guys, you know, um, especially doing long day projects. And if you're like us, you know, sometimes we don't have two or three days to just let the bike sit. Like we have to film. And so when we have a, a day like today, like we have to push through because Lurch, I won't have them tomorrow and I won't have them the next day. And it may be another two weeks before I could actually get Lurch back in here. And although I do film a lot of videos by myself, it takes 10, they already take long um, because we're filming. Mm-hmm. It takes 10 times as long when you're the cameraman doing all the lighting, all the camera shots, all the talking, all the mechanical stuff. So I try to do as many as I can, you know, uh, uh, when when uh, Lurch is over or, or one of the guys, Oscar or Rick or, or any of the guys. So uh, um, it just makes, yeah. So it gets into these long days where we're just pumping, pumping through and we get in a hurry because Lurch knows we got to wrap this film today. Like we got to wrap this today. And it's happened before where we haven't. Um, but for the most part, we try to do I think that's what Lurch was getting frustrated about, you know, at, especially going over to mine. Because the day had went pretty well up to that point. Yeah, we're starting to button, smooth. button stuff up and put it all back together. We already had some cold beers out. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. had cracked a few cold beers to start cleaning camera gear up, and I knew I needed a couple extra shots. And um, But yeah, yeah, it, uh, I'm just monitoring chat. But mm-hmm. yeah, thanks for everybody for being in chat. Appreciate it. Um, so here's the dealio. Uh, yeah, and the funny thing was about my bike. So with the ignition and just jump in whenever you want, Lurch, you took it apart, so you might be able. To you told the story a little ins- fast too. Did I? That's okay. You you're just succinct. Maybe I'm too long winded. Uh, Potentially, but I want to clean up a few things in there. So, um, yeah, there there's some different uh, rednecky you know YouTube videos where, and it's fine, and I'm not talking about about them, but they spend all this time like making this like tool. So, in the ignition, like you said, whatever you want to call tumblers, there's I just call them alignment. Um, because it's not really a key, you know what I mean? It's a shaft with a shaft goes down in the, it's almost like a key. It, it's a key going into a lock. And there's, if you can imagine a lock, it's got different tumblers in there. So that key, it is, but the key has nothing cutouts. to do with the, the alignment of the ignition, right? No, the can, key just unlocks the ignition. Yes. The alignment the tumblers of the ignition all have to be in a certain yes. order. We got, right. Right. Yeah. Okay. That so the shaft goes in the hole yes, it and does. it's got bumps on it. And that's scary because you should probably see a doctor <laughs> if that shit happens. <laughs> Your doohickey could be going bad if that happens. Um, back on track, but it's literally, and so it's got to fit down in there and there's three different levels because one of the levels is like the top of the ignition and that has to line up. And then they're not all in the same line. So around that shaft or the protrusions are in different areas. And this is when it gets complicated for the doctor. But the, so the next level is like the actual uh, power for the ignition. And it has a plastic thing and it has to line up in a different rotation with those. And so just imagine if they all get turned and misaligned, it becomes a puzzle. Yes, because like, as, as you turn the ignition from fork lock to ignition to accessories. There you go. Uh, it's doing it's different moved, things. It's doing different things. And and so the, all those, as you said, steps or or tumblers or whatever you want to call them, they need to be in a specific Bumps. order so that as you turn the, the ignition switch, it's the, the shaft that goes down into the ignition is turning those 
uh, tumblers at the right in the right sequence so that all those, um, like I said, fork lock, uh, ignition, um, accessories, all that works. And when you get that out of whack, oh. it doesn't start. It doesn't do, I mean, you might get your headlights to come on. You may not, you may not get it into, uh, into accessories. And one of the really bad things that can happen is it can get stuck in there and you cannot get this switch out. So not only is it misaligned, so it's not working properly, it can get stuck in there. Yep. And that's where I got with yours because I got it so jacked up that we couldn't even get the switch back out. But the funny thing is my bike would turn on. Yes. Remember? It, it, the, it would, it, I have it on the video. My so bike one of the tumblers would turn off, but it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't turn off if I remember right. Yeah, it might. Us, we couldn't turn it off. That's right. Right, yeah. It, so it would you, like. Because we were talking about what are you going right. to do? P- pull your main fuse. Pull your main fuse, yeah. Yeah. So, but the thing would turn. So you can literally get it so misaligned in there that it will still turn and it still acted. It still clicked, but it was obviously missing. The one tumbler was missing the ignition part of yes. it that turned it on. So it's it can become very complicated. Uh, but uh, so that's kind of the way that evening that things we finally just gave up and I said, listen, Lurch, and here's the thing. Um, I don't really get mad about stuff like that. Um, I was mad at myself. You, Lurch will beat himself up. Like I wasn't mad at all. I'm like, okay, it's another hurdle to cross and we got to figure this out. And the thing is Lurch had to leave and I couldn't get him back. No, I was uh, available the next day and, oh. and I left thinking I had busted your ignition. You're going to have to buy a whole new ignition. Right. Which are, if I remember right, somewhere up around 100, 150. Yeah, at least, if not higher. But don't get scared with what we're telling you because uh, we do have a, a little bit uh, some tips and tricks and advice. And now that we know what exactly what we're dealing with, uh, we're going to be able to uh, explain it to you. And uh, you will never have to worry about, because David Schwartz says in here, that's why I ride the Road King. I rented a street glide from Eagle Rider. I broke the ignition. I was stuck for hours before they got someone to me. I almost missed my flight back. Dang, man, I didn't know that, David. Thanks for sharing uh, that story. All right, so I want to tell you a little bit more about me not being pissed, Lurch. Oh, yeah? So here's the deal, guys. Uh, Here's the reason I don't get really mad about stuff like that. Number one, we're running and gunning. Number two, that's the cost of doing business. Um, It's a first world problem, right? It's a first world problem. Like, oh my God, my expensive street glide Hardy Davidson in my shop where I park my Hardy Davidson. You know, I have to put things in perspective. Total first world problem uh, that I knew we would get fixed. Um, but the other thing is, honestly, a lot of stuff we do around here, and I know out there, is it gave me the ability. I try to keep the half glass full most of the time. I'm not always that good at it. But it gave me the ability um, to realize that we didn't know a ton about the Harley ignition at that point. And we never claim guys here to know, say that we know everything we learn as we go to, we just have the ability, or I feel like we do to take that knowledge, whatever we learn and the new stuff we learn, and then make it in a really good format. That's understandable to bikers. Cause that was my first thought is however this gets fixed, I'm going to help a bunch of people out there with this issue because I looked all over. There's nothing but just plain. I'll be quite on a shit YouTube videos on it. There's just shit out there on this subject. Not all, but that's what I look for right away. I'm like, Oh my God, nobody explains this. Nobody knows what they're doing. No, even what, even the videos that are good quality are just showing you use the alignment tool. To and they don't show. In. Yeah. Just, just put jam it in there and, and turn. That way you can, you can actually, with the tool, you can put the tool in there and then you can lock and unlock and do things if you need to turn <laughs> yeah. the ignition on. Um, but we had a bigger problem than that. We needed to get those tumblers back in line. And, and those were horrible because they just say, just put the tool in there and turn yeah, and stuff. It's not like not that. that. It's easy. not that easy. It's not at all. It is once you know what you're doing, but not having somebody that can explain it to you. So so I looked at it as an opportunity. I was like, okay. And our problem is bigger than that because your ignition switch was stuck in there as well. It's not like it was just out uh, misaligned. No, it was just misaligned. Was oh yeah, we couldn't get the ignition out. Yeah, oh, I'm tracking what you're saying. With. We had a the much shaft we problem. couldn't get out. Yeah, yeah. Which which in in the end created a really good video because you actually tore the ignition apart. Yes, and we're gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw it as an opportunity, and let me tell you, 
uh, I will give you the video and kind of tell you a little bit more about that um, and what we did and kind of how things progress and some things, easy things you can do because it does happen now and then, especially if you're popping that ignition. What's the one thing to avoid it, Lurch, before we move on? Pull to, that sucker straight out and do not turn it at all when you're pulling it out. Right. It's got to go straight so out. So turn it to in. four o'clock. Yeah. So you turn your ignition all the way to four o'clock. If you're going to take the ignition out, guys, um, to do a handlebar job or any other job that you're doing, take that inner lower dash panel off. That's the first, you know, you want to get that out of your way. Turn it to four o'clock. We have a video on this. Don't worry. I'll link to it in the description of this podcast, the show notes, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you turn the key. All the way to the left and push yep, up on the pin underneath. You push in underneath. on the key. There's a little button. Button. Little pin yep. button. Mm -hmm. You push up. And that is the key yeah. is don't freaking move it left or right straight and pull it up. straight out and don't screw with anything else. If you turn ever so slightly as you're pulling up out, you're going to miss a line and there's a chance. Yeah. And so up to this point, we had heard of it. Um, I had been actually emailed on it in the past and I knew of it generally, but I was like, we've never experienced, we never experienced it. that we've taken until a we got in a hurry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so a bunch of them off we have. So we were pretty surprised because uh, we had done so many of them and we've never had an issue that eventually it was bound to happen to us. So uh, let's do this. And then we're going to dive in a little bit deeper and, and give you guys some tips and tricks and kind of what you can do with the ignition. Hey, bikeaholics searching for new and exciting motorcycle products. Zero 3D has products you dream about for your bike. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Harley Davidson's and Honda Goldwing motorcycles. Zero 3D has got your back with chrome and black black parts, blah, 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 lighting and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing and more time riding. Zero 3D has a design team of riders with over 40 years of experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero and Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus, plug, and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them via email at sales at zero 3 dcom or give them a call at 715 808 0027. Check out your local Harley and Honda dealership and ask for Zero or Gold Strike parts. A new leader has emerged, so check out Zero 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for all new Honda Gold Wings. Better yet, help support us and head on over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Can't wait till we've been working with Zero for years, carry it in our store. And we don't forget, we will be at the Ciro booth in Black Hills for Sturgis. Can't wait to actually sign the boobies. I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lurch will sign your boobies. <laughs> um, so if any of you Very in chat. Very tastefully and respectfully. Right, right. He'll just. So if any of you in the chat right now have uh, moobs, uh, Lurch I didn't will say sign moobs. Moobs will sign there's your a, moobs. There's a difference. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or your moobs. Either way, Lurch will sign it. He'll uh, sign your doohickey if you want. All right. Okay, so we can't wait to meet those people. I've talked to him on the phone so much. Uh -huh. I've emailed. I just, uh, I know what they look like, but I just don't have it met him in person. So that'd be cool. So back to our ignition mess. So here's what I did. Um, so for the next several days, uh, I obsessed about it and I was working the regular job. Uh -huh. But every second I got, I was um, looking. I, I got up early in the morning before work. I came home and worked on it and... Um, it, it was, uh, let me tell you this Harley, essentially I took the ignition out. And so I started trying to figure the ignition out. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it at any time, if you ever have an ignition problem with your Harley guys, and it does get misaligned, please don't freak out. Uh, I have a video for you. It's straight up helping a ton of people. And we've got so much good feedback on it. I'll put it in the show notes, but it's lawabidingbiker.com forward slash fix dash hardy dash ignition. Don't worry. You can search the site anytime with a search feature. Big search bar on our website, just hardy ignition. Um, it's on our YouTube channel. Uh, and I show you kind of what uh, essentially we're going to talk about a little bit, but I'll give you a bit more detail that uh, may be useful to you as far as the ignition um, and, and, and what you're doing. So what I learned really quick is... Uh, that Harley doesn't want really. So you go to their, uh, you go to the uh, manual. Uh, what do they call it? Service manual. I've got the official service manual and these ignitions are the same for like years of bikes guys. So it's not a specific to a model or anything like that. You all know what I'm talking about. The big Chrome thing and you turn it left and four o'clock and all that kind of stuff. 
it's been widely used and uh, for for the Harley Davidson models. Uh, what I learned quickly was they don't give you any parts inside the ignition. Um, what I learned uh, was that they just want you to buy the hundred hundred and fifty dollar ignition if there's any problems with it whatsoever, and just throw it away and put in a new one. Which is kind of where I thought we were at because I was doing I was obsessing over too because I mm, felt like yes, shit. you were too. Yeah. So uh, the only thing I could find is that you. In, in my research was you could buy that switch, the lower part that the, the key and the shaft goes down into. And I assumed we were going to have to remove your uh, existing ignition, take it apart, and at least get the shaft out of it mm-hmm. and then put a new ignition in. Or we were even at the point where we might think we have to buy the whole thing and a new shaft and a new key. Potentially. If, if we, we couldn't, couldn't get, get it, it out. jammed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I figured we could get, could, because the ignition is a plastic box, and I figured at a minimum we can break that sucker <laughs> open. I thought we could just break it open, open yeah. just bust the hell out of it and at least get that ignition Free shaft, the shaft. key, get the key and the shaft out yeah. and then replace it. But uh, you had another idea, didn't you? Mm, I did. I wanted to learn this thing and I was like, there's got to be a way to tinker. Even though there was zero help online, nobody had a video on it, nothing. I obsessed over it. Well, and I, I spent imagine, the, yeah, go ahead. I imagine your thought was, might as well take it apart and see if I can fix it because if I break it, okay. That's how I'll I started. I already had one. one on order. Yeah. Well, so, that's right. I forgot that. You told me you got one ordered. Yeah. So I ordered one up right away. Forgot that. And I started thinking about it after I ordered it because I obsessed and I lay awake at night. And I'm like, I'm going to fix it. So I spent basically the next four days, every minute I could before and after work, dealing with it. And um, what I learned is uh, I did take the actual ignition apart. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was... It, the video, which it should, makes it look very easy and like, duh, that's how it all works. When you take a component apart that you've never taken apart before and there's little springs and- Ball bearings. Ball there. bearings yeah. and doohickeys. Oh, there and, was doohickeys in know, there too? There may have been a doohickey okay. in there. I called a couple things doohickeys, sure. but sure. Uh, I, I hope the video makes it look easy and it probably everybody now that watches it goes, well, duh. It's not, duh. that's why there was no videos on it because nobody made, had, you know, essentially took the time to share or figure it out. Um, So I'm pretty happy with this video and that's what came out of this. Um, Again, which is why I wasn't completely mad, but I'm not kidding. So I took it apart. Now you guys are going to love this. Uh, I took it apart and I will tell you that I warn you in the video about when you take the ignition component off that actually powers it. On top of that, from my memory, is there's two little springs and ball bearings on it. So I popped those multiple. I basically spent probably five hours before I ever decided to film trying to figure out how to take it apart. And I couldn't figure out how to get it back together. So the shaft lined up and I didn't understand because there's no help online. There's no manuals. There's nothing. So I just kept tinkering and tinkering. um, And those ball bearings popped they like three times went flying the third time <laughs> you had to search your garage for him third time i couldn't yeah. find it oh so the next now i'm really stressed i'm like ah, eh, fuck it i got a ignition on order anyways i'm just i wasn't even going to make a video because i couldn't resolve the problem so i went down to the hardware store and even uh, tacoma screw tried to find a ball bearing that size nothing 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 so I actually was, I get really obsessive about stuff like this. Um, my personality, I'm sure y'all can figure that out. Um, that's no secret. But uh, I came back home and I just was going to, I got the ignition, I got all the parts and uh, I started tinkering it with it some more. And I was like, damn it, I got to figure this out. I looked online for ball bearings that size, trying to get them well, trying, how do you size that? And people wanted to sell you like 50 different size ball bearings. It was very, very frustrating experience. So I got it all figured out. It's finally clicked to me. And again, I hope the video makes it look very easy and very like, duh. Um, but there's a there's a barrel down in there with, it, it's crazy. So I was like, okay, game on. I have got to find this ball bearing. So I spent a shitload of time in my garage crawling around your hands and knees finally found it bro finally found it yep that's exactly what i did uh it was up underneath uh by the air compressor back up back in the corner crazy dude i found it three times before that you should have seen at that point because i knew i had it then i knew i had a video Uh, yeah and i knew (laughs) i was like this 
is going to help so many bikers. And when I have a video that I know is going to help so many bikers, not for popularity, not for that kind of stuff, but I know that like, there's going to be that guy. This is what drives me. Like, you know, like there's going to be that guy in his garage. That's just like Lurch and he's by himself or he's got a buddy and he's misaligned his shaft. And he's misaligned his shaft and his ignition. And he's going to, what the first thing he's going to go to, he's going to start typing YouTube and he's going to try to find it. And I hope that he can find our video because it will allow them to breathe easy and they will be able to have another beer and complete that process step by step on their workbench with that video and not have to be stressed and not have to buy a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar ignition. Um, but I found the ball bearing it ding, ding, ding in my head. And so then I spent, it was the next weekend before I actually, or almost the weekend before I got it fixed. So the next day I got the video camera out and I filmed it two different nights to finish it. Cause I had to work the regular job too. And I filmed it in segments and, uh, I show very up close how to take that baby apart. So um, you'll be able to, if you get in that situation, there is another way you can do it. And I'll get to that in okay. a minute. Um, cause I, there is a easier way that you want to try first, um, before you take the ignition apart. But if you do, if there's no other way to fix it, then, uh, uh, don't worry about it. Um, with that video, uh, I assure you, you will be able to fix it. I like this comment that's on yeah, the video. Yeah, what's up? It says, this was the perfect video for the question I have about this system. Not all heroes wear capes. Oh, nicely. <laughs> I remember that comment, yeah. dude. That's sweet. Yeah, a lot of good comments on it. So that video, it's not going to get, it's not going to be one of those videos that has a million views. That's not what it was about. No, but if somebody needs it, it's going to be invaluable. And if we ever need it again? Because I, I can't remember I it all. I hope we never do. I hope it, but, but I we do go back and use our content uh, when we're doing things that we haven't done for all a while. the time. Heck yeah. All the time, guys, our own catalog, because we don't do the stuff every day. And when we nail a video, we know that we can go back and we'll just refresh our memory on how we did that. We've done it many times. We've got six years of videos. We've got over 500 videos now. And if you think we can, we're not full-time mechanics and do it every day. If you think we can remember every little thing we've done. So I love it for our own use. Um, so that will be, uh, yeah, it'll be that biker very frustrated. And I guarantee that's exactly that Cape comment was exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. It popped up in his, in his YouTube when he was, when he needed it the most. It's kind of like, you know, when you need something really bad and it's right there for you. So, all right. Let's do this real quick. And then I'm going to tell you another way to try to fix it before you have to take it all apart. Are hey, back, Alex. Oh, so, there you go. Are go you ahead. searching for the easiest and quickest attachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick Rack has just what you're looking for. Rick Rack. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Slap your paint. Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage rack systems. This father son team designed something really special. You can't find it anywhere else. Yep, these guys ride, so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack Quick Attach System is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use Rick Rack, Rick Rack. you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, bikeholics? Mm -hmm. Head over to Law Binding Biker Store, check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. And uh, of course, we're looking forward to meeting the Rick Rack team. We'll be spending some time at the uh, meet and greet at their booth and we'll all be sporting the rick rack systems of course why wouldn't we riding over to sturgis so we have all that extra room love it love it love my rick rack system been going on i think three years now with that system all right lurch as we continue and then we're going to wrap this up we have some emails that we're going to get into here well, i'm not sure we're going to do a uh, random email pick and see what kind of questions pop up and see what we do. So um, the other way to align the ignition. Now, there is a tool, and it's a proper tool. Instead of bending copper tube and trying to get it to fit, it's a little bit spendy, but uh, you can get them on eBay. I will link to it in the show notes. It's also linked to in the video, um, below the video and on YouTube, and it'll pump you right through to the tool I bought. And I bought it just so we have it on hand, even though I didn't utilize it it would not have fixed this problem because the shaft was stuck in there. Mm -hmm. If your shaft doesn't come out, you're done. It's only two bolts. You just remove your ignition. The whole ignition comes out, put it on your workbench. You'll see in the video, super simple. Take that bad boy apart. Do not lose those springs and bearings. You'll see it in the video. Be very, very careful. Um, and and get, your, get your shaft unstuck 
um, get your shaft out of there, and uh, then you can go from there. Then you can go through the step by step. Now, the way to try it is to leave it on the bike is if you do have the shaft and it removes like Popeye's did, it just wasn't lined up. Uh, you can use a, this alignment tool and it's a specialty tool specifically for Harley ignition and you can put it in there. It's very hard to explain on podcast, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to, because I show it with the ignition off the bike on the workbench and I show you the different mechanisms, the three different mechanisms in there. Cause if you stick it in the hole, and you don't know what you're doing yet, like a young boy, <laughs> things aren't going to go well. No, no, you got to go it's in just in like stages. a time bomb waiting to go off. Got to go in, in stages. You got to go in stages. Okay. You got those three different collars or tumblers or whatever you want to call them that you got to line up. So you got to just work your way in Getting slowly and align them just one at a time. Take it easy when you put the alignment tool in there. Okay. Go slow. Anyways, if you watch my point being, if you watch the video, even if you're just going to do the alignment tool, watch it because that's off the bike and it simply shows you the three different mechanisms and why you're using the tool and what you're actually trying to do with the tool. Because if you just jam the tool in there, you never want to just jam. Or you don't want to just jam it causes shaft problems. Nope, nope, nope. Causes problems. You could you could damage you the, could, the hole. You, you could, could you could damage the, the, components. the tool. I mean, you never right, know. exactly. Mm-hmm. So go easy. The, and the thing is, guys, you'll and all right back on track because this is good i could just keep making joke after joke you put it in just a little ways just the tip and just, <laughs> see what i mean dude this, i just this is going nowhere it, but you you can put it in just a little bit and then you're aligning the top two and once you get those and without seeing it like that's what we watch a lot of videos without understanding what you're doing like it makes no sense once i saw the guts yeah of the ignition i was like this it would totally make sense what you've seen what's inside yes and what you're trying to align so then you Otherwise, would know what to feel blindly. for exactly yeah. you're right mm-hmm. you're doing it blindly so it's good to watch that and know what you're feeling for and then once you know what it looks like you'll feel it when you put it in and you'll be like oh there's those first two alignments and i would have to watch it again myself to 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 uh make sure i'm doing it exactly right because uh, it's been a little while but that's what the video is for uh and then there is a high probability if the shaft isn't jammed in there that you can with that tool properly align it again watching that video so i kind of cover both aspects in that video to give an overall tutorial of what you're doing but i don't want you to be scared of it anymore we're not scared of it anymore and we'll never have frustration like that again and i know all the bikers out there and the youtube videos available will not have frustrations with that again i got it fixed i was pretty stoked and I called Lurch, and uh, were you surprised that I got I to fix that fest? I was so happy and relieved, man, because I'd been stressing out about it. I thought for sure we are going to have to put a new one on there, and I just I felt responsible because it, it was me that did it, and yeah, I felt like shit, man. So when you told me you fixed it, I knew it, you I, did. I, was, I felt bad for I you. I was relieved and very happy that you were able to get that thing fixed. And that I told you, and I got a full video out of yeah. it. I filmed mm-hmm. it, and mm-hmm. I released that video. A lot of videos... They don't even get released for a year or edited for six, eight months. We film so much and we only release so much. That one, I was like, oh, there's just some of those videos where you're like, when it's I can't so find anything valuable, on YouTube. You got to get yeah. it out right away. Yeah. Um, all right. One of the things you didn't say about the, the is other than just being an alignment tool, it's also igni- an ignition tool. Oh, yeah. So uh, when you take out your stock ignition, you can put it in so that you can turn the ignition. And we if have you the need luxury. it to for a project, right? Yeah, we have the luxury of um, a lift and, our, and the bike's upright and straight. Um, but if you have the bike on the side stand and you got the, the your, your handlebars turned all the way and you turn it to lock to get the ignition out, then you can put that tool and then turn the ignition away from lock and then you can open, you know, free up your handlebars and you can turn the ignition on. So there could be instances where you use it just as a, a, a temporary ignition. So it's ignition. I think they call it like an ignition alignment, alignment ignition s- tool, sl- alignment tool, alignment tool. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. And uh, you don't have to get the HD stamped one. No, uh, it's more expensive. I actually bought one and I believe the link that at the bottom of the video goes through to an Amazon purchase and it's cheaper and it works just look while you're talking. Thank you. Just the same. So David Schwartz in chat live chat right here says you should make a lab blooper video. Yes. Uh, and I will let you know, David, which you know, probably that a lot at a, the end of a lot of our videos, we'll throw in a couple blooper so um of what happened during that project of people dropping screws or tools or some funny stuff we say not all the videos but we do um do some of that uh i am sure ryan does says jack livid livid yeah 
Yeah, you've got two links here, one for Amazon, one for JNP. Okay, so yeah, they both, and they're both non-HD stamped tools. Um, yeah, it'll look about 45 bucks from Amazon. Yep, yep. Very cool. Thanks for looking that up. You're welcome. Producer over there. That's why I wish I had you every time, bro. Um, all right. Although I will say Squid was here. You know him, squared away. Had his laptop out, had his show notes, had his own notes and stuff. Dude, we did a couple episodes with Squid. Y'all that got to see it live or we posted one of them in the back of your patron account too. Uh, you guys are seeing everything months. Even if it's not live, we're still posting within two days the video broadcast. Like the second episode we're doing tonight. Don't forget, guys. Um, even though it's not live, we're still video recording it and it will be uploaded in your patron account so you'll have it months before because we do batch process but anyways squid did a couple and uh, those will be coming out and he was super prepared so i've kind of caught up on chat a little bit um anything else to say about that and then we'll handle a couple emails and we'll take it out uh nothing else i was embarrassed but i'm glad we got it fixed yes and uh there you go and i was never mad at you lurch just for the record i was mad at myself but you know i was never mad at you oh yeah i wasn't worried about that i know i just felt like a dumbass I was a little, the only stress I had is we have so many projects already that sometimes things divert you. And I was like, okay, that's, that's priority. Cause I got to get my ignition fixed. And so then that's fine. Uh, like I said, it actually turned out to be a really good thing. That's going to help bikers. So how can I, the big stressor for me was uh, Lee's bike and getting it fixed so that he could ride it home. Um, and then, cause Lee had trying, to be back and he's got a couple hour ride and trying to figure in trying to figure his out. I jacked yours up so bad that we couldn't even get the, the ignition out of it. So I was relieved to some extent because we got Lee's fixed. Uh, and I, I knew that it wasn't as big a deal for you. You've, you, um, you, you know, you're home. It's not like you, we can't work on it, but it's right. I've got my work bike and stuff. Yeah. It's not like a m main mode of transportation. It wasn't summer. I felt, but I was, mm -hmm. I was responsible for it. I did it. I was, uh, yeah, very stressed out. So when you told I me knew you figured were. it out, I was, I was very relieved. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy, and me and me and Lurch had, had originally decided that he would come back over and we'd figure it out. But being obsessive like I am, I just dove right in. I was like, I got to figure. That's this not thing really out. in your nature. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've worked with you for a long time, and anything you do, you you're do it 110. percent <laughs> You're so surprised. Yeah. Yes, you're yeah. OCD to the max Why don't and you, obsessive. I need a little sound effect for uh, like going through random emails, dude. Let's just pick. An email here, like a like a wheel spinning, like yeah, 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 like the wheel of fortune wheel or something, dude. Pick a random one. I don't have. I don't think I have anything, dude. Oh, okay. That any good? That's what you got. Even close. All right. All you got's a wet fart. I don't think we we have anything on the board for that, dude. All right, let's just uh, in the interest of time, if you guys have any questions in chat too that are like reasonable question that we could answer fairly quickly um, or comments. We'll be monitoring that. But with that said, uh, it's been a while since we've dove and I, and I love the emails guys and I love the voicemails and we always have them as like extra content episodes, but sometimes we go so long on the regular content that we don't get to them. So we're going to try to dive in. Oh, I guess we've done this before. Let me see. I got mail. Yay. I got That's mail. That's what you use. We could just use that. All right, so we're just doing some random emails that I'm going through, and we're just going to pick and just, we can't, once we open one, Lurch, here's the here's the game. Once we open an email, we can't go, oh, that's not a good one, or that takes too much time. I don't know if I subscribe to that. Yeah, you're subscribing to no. it right okay. now, dude. All right. All right. So we just, no matter well, what, we have to read it. microphone so I can see. Okay. And we'll Let do, we'll try to do a couple, guys, and see if it brings up any uh, any, any good information here. Boom. It's all you. Uh, this is from a gentleman who uh, identifies himself as Irish uh, of Nashville, Tennessee, and it's about rust removal. <laughs> so it's a rust removal. Welcome, question. Irish. Welcome to the podcast. Here's what he says. Ryan, I very much enjoy all your videos. Uh, thank you for them. Well, thank you, Irish. My question is, what's the best way to remove rust from Chrome? I have a 1988 Sportster that has some light rust. That has started. That has started, and I want to get rid of. Good lord! I want to get right on it before it gets out of hand. I can't read today. This may be a good video idea because I'm sure others have the same issue. Thanks for the help with this, and stay safe. Here's your response. Was this an email response? Apparently, I think this was a Rick Big Daddy responded to this, and I just copied it. I think. 
Potentially. Or it might have been me. I don't know. Maybe it this was you. something I would have done. Oh, yeah. It could be you. I, g- I guess it could be you, too. Uh, you can use uh, the finest steel wool. They call it four-aught or four-zeros. It's very, very fine steel wool that Not won't scratch Not to be confused chrome. with double-aught. Yeah, double-aught buck. So it's mm. four-aught fine steel wool. Uh, it's the finest grade that you can get, and it, it, it won't scratch your chrome. Uh, you can also put a little WD-40 on that uh, steel wool and just go to, go to work and start polishing it. Uh, one I, one suggestion is you might try a, an inconspicuous place on the chrome first, just make sure it doesn't scratch or discolor. Um, but that's what we, what we do. We use WD-40 and fine steel wool. And then after you're done, uh, we use a uh, bug slide to clean and polish the chrome. Oh, bam. Where can you get bug slide lurch? Oh, you can get it at uh, uh, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Yeah, buddy. And all jokes aside, uh, we didn't just throw bug slide in there. I use it on my police bike a lot. Um, so It's good protector. It? That it, and even if it's light uh-huh. rust, the bug slide will take it's it enough. off. It's the steel wool. Mm-hmm. It's just a little lubrication. I don't always use WD-40, which works fine too. I'll actually use the bug slide. And then our police bikes get a lot of cone marks on the exhaust pipes, mm-hmm. like rubber cone marks. Sure. Seriously. Uh, well, I carry st- a little bit of a uh, little piece, little piece of steel it's good wool for getting your God. wife's uh, uh, heels or boots or whatever she's wearing when she touches your pipe and put some yes you know, rubber when she or touches plastic your pipe or whatever with her boots. It's yeah. a good ride. Yeah, it's it's, it's that four out steel wool works very good on chrome. Yep, yep. Finish her off there, guys, uh, with the try the WD forty and then finish it off with some bug slide. I think. That will work good if it's not deep, deep rust. So thank you. Uh, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact is how Irish got a hold of us. Oh, bam. Got to go with it. Got to go with it. Go. This is uh, scroll back down so I can see his name. Uh, this is from Robert Rivera of Weed, California. He says, hi, Ryan. You going to answer him? Hi, Ryan. No, oh, you're not listening. No, go ahead. Hi, Ryan. How many times do I have to say hi, Ryan, you, before you, you say hi? You just read it. I'm busy doing something else. Okay, never mind. Go back to whatever you're doing. You go. He says, hi, Ryan. I want to let you know I found your podcast. Spent the last week trying to listen to all the back episodes. Really enjoying them, uh, except episode seven. Cuz was an open wound, and you guys are putting your cigars out on him. We must have been busting his, butts, his butt. Uh, hurt my heart for the guy. Very painful to listen to. Uh Hope and sounds like things are going better for him. Your tutorial videos, very informative and very professionally done. Thank you for those. And you just put something up in way. There you go. Quit, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There. Dude, I got, I'm just ordered my biker grip. I can't wait to hook it up and try it out. I have a pile of crappy phone holders that just aren't uh, made well and aren't very user friendly. Once your phone is in place, the biker gripper looks like you're going to be the biker gripper looks like it's going to be the last accessory holder I have to buy. Looking forward to receiving it. Thank you for all you do. I can tell you this labor, love, and a lot of time, effort, and work on your part. As soon as I can scrape together some funds, I will make a donation and become a patron. Keep up the good work, Rob. Nice, dude. And uh, where was Rob from? He was from uh, Weed, California. No stems, no seeds that you don't need. Acapulco Gold is... Badass Weed. Now I know why you weren't paying attention. You saw Weed, California, and you were trying to find a sound, but... Dude, how cool is it to live in Weed, California, dude? Not very cool. It would be cool. Let's see what we Look, got. Look, you know, I uh, when I was a kid, I I, uh, uh, I inhaled uh, frequently. <laughs> that was uh, that was that was the point. Um, <laughs> At least Obama was honest about that, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh God, dude. Let's see. I experimented with marijuana a time or two, and I didn't like it, and didn't inhale. Yeah, right. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, you're going down a rabbit hole of weed sounds. Cool. <laughs> dude, when I see weed California, dude, that's all I got. All right, guys. Enough play there. Let's see. Uh, Rick Wheeler says in the chat says, thanks, guys, for introducing us to F4 Customs. Oh, yeah, in episode 231. You just put just, that one out, right? Just put it out a few days ago. Very cool. Great podcast. I never knew they were local to me. Oh, yeah, that's very cool, too, Rick. Thanks for sharing that. He says, uh, Rick says, definitely checking them out after watching your videos. Yes, thank you very much. Um, obviously, Speaking of steel wool, you took steel wool to that thing. Damn right. Unbelievable. Did, Why? Well, because the guys it. at F4 Customs said, said could. I could, so I got to yeah. try. If you haven't seen the video, that's brake a quote fluid from on the it. video. You left it on, brake fluid on one over a weekend, and I think that's what I used to open up the uh, interview with, but amazing product. It, it, tough. Yeah, Doubt tough. It. And we're selling the heck out of them in the Law Abiding Biker store. Um, so thank you, Rick, for that. Uh, we do have a, a video on the YouTube channel uh, on that F4 Customs, and I did a hammer test. I tried to break the thing. It's crazy. I'm running it right now 
uh, as I'm looking at my street light out there, I'm running the smoked version, the shorter version, and uh, all the information's over in the store. But yeah, it's really cool to get to do interviews like that. And uh, there's a lot of companies. The economy's so good. There's companies everywhere. We're learning that. And a lot of motorcycle companies of products that are really good, but they don't have a name yet, right? So they can be better than some of the market. But if you don't- Meaning they're not as well known as some of the- That's it. It's not about always how good your product is. It's about- getting Marketing people to and, know your product. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. So good company and uh, we're enjoying our relationship with them. And uh, yeah, and uh, Rick and uh, uh, Big Daddy and uh, Goat down there are shipping those things all over the place trying to stay up with demand because the video came out and then that's kind of backing it up, mm-hmm. um, the interview. All right, so let's do one more email and I think we'll take it out of here. Which one? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which one should I do, Lurch? You pick. Can't back out. Fine. Can't back out. Let's just do this one. That way I know we'll save that one. Boom. Uh, this is from Mike Holmberg of Hawaii. I was just in Hawaii. Wish he was from weed somewhere. <laughs> it's funner. It says, Ryan, just want to thank you for your video on routine maintenance on Harley Davidson. I purchased a 2016 Street Glide in July, and I've hit 1,000 mile service. I was really on the fence about taking it to a Harley dealer here in Hawaii or just doing it myself, uh, just due to warranty stuff. Excellent video, accurate, love detail, and I have learned some stuff that I did not know. Aloha from Hawaii, Mike Holmberg. Aloha, aloha. You just got back from- I did. Oh, i.e. jerk over here, Lurch. Just got back from 10 days. You went to Maui this time, right? I went to Maui and Kauai. Kauai, that's right. He rented a Harley while I was over there. And we'll talk about that in the next podcast. You don't want to tell the story right now? Uh, it depends on time. You want to keep going? No, it's up to you. Tell it in the next podcast. Okay. Yep. Because, yeah, you we're going to listen to the next podcast. I got a story about renting a Harley in Hawaii and riding and, out to Hana and, and an and, incident. And the fun that ensued. Serious incident that happened. Yeah. You'll want to know. It's, yeah, it's sketchy what happened to him. And patron members, don't worry. Even though it's not going to be live, we're going to upload it in your account within two days. And so you'll get it months before everybody else. So if you want to hear Lurch's story, just check the back end of your patron accounts tomorrow or the next day and it will be uploaded. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad that little thing come yeah, up. Yeah, I meant to talk about it. I'm glad that uh, we saw that email from the gentleman from Hawaii. Oh, we're not done. I you know what? That's what he's Yay! telling me. No, nope. okay. Yay! We're going to do one more for bonus and then we're going to take it out. Oh, that's a long one. Bam, done, go. Tony of Acala, Florida. It's about a rear belt cam adjustment. It's referencing our video uh, real quick. Oh. He was referencing our video, our rear wheel, Harley rear wheel removal video at lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash rear wheel. So in reference to that video, he's talking about the rear uh, belt cam adjustment. So it says, hey, I really enjoy the video on changing out the rear tire. Everything you mentioned was spot on, especially the part of removing the rear caliper. I made this mistake of thinking I could slide Uh, the wheel out of the rotor without removing the caliper and the rotor got hung up. Luckily I was able to remove the caliper and all was good. Quick question uh, or comment on the belt cam adjusters. You mentioned in the video to mark the cams as to where they line uh, each line up on the uh, swing arm. I did just that. However, when putting everything back together, my cam markings were slightly off when trying to line up uh, to the boss. Uh, After much thought on this, I realized uh, only one side needs marking. The left cam is welded to the axle crown, true, and the right side cam fits perfectly perfectly on that flat or notched end where the threads are. So there really was no adjustment to the left uh, and right side cams. The only adjustment would be made uh, for belt being too loose or tight, uh, not whether wheel is cocked left or right. He said cocked. He did. So right. uh, the, your response was, yeah, you are correct on the cams, bro. The left cam cam is welded, and so I just make a mark for my visual. Uh, and what? again, I'm anal, I guess. Okay, all I'm right. anal and obsessive yes. compulsive, I guess. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it will line up uh, where it ends up. Mine too won't always be exactly on when realigning, but no big deal or anything to worry about. There you go. Good point, and thank you for leaving that again. All those emails were left at lawbindingbiker.com forward slash contact form, and uh, yeah, we love hearing from. The audience. It's, it's nice. oh, yeah, go ahead. It, let her rip. I was taking her out. Go. It is nice, uh, not just through email, but also the comments on videos where people see 
um, a potentially a better way to do something, and they are not afraid to comment. And so nicely, we learn a lot just by the comments of people uh, watching our videos, working yes. on their bikes, and giving us their tips. Yep. Trips nicely. Not the guy that says, "Effin, I effin did this thirty years. I've been doing it. You can't. You got to use purple Loctite." And if you don't use purple <laughs> or green Loctite, you're uh, gonna die. Oh, we don't. Yeah. We don't get very many of those. Very once in a while, we get one, and just makes us laugh. We got a troll-free zone because uh, you, the listeners, have created that. Uh, it's a positive place to come and and uh, view videos and uh, uh, talk and share stuff. And but every once in a while, we get some uh, troll that makes some pretty funny comments. And they get banned instantly. Yeah. we don't put up with anything. We, we, we don't. We, we don't comment quite a, back. We just ban you. We save yeah. quite a few of them every once in a while. We. We, oh, we, yeah. we talk about it. It's been a while. I need to start saving them again because I yeah. forget because we never get to them. I stopped saving them. I'm just so busy. I'm just like, ban. But it's it's very few, actually. Yeah. Uh, very few. Like less than 1%. Um, less, because than, less than point, less than 1% of 1%. It's true. Something because like we keep a clean community and people go in there and they look and they're like, eh, this is not the place for trolls. Everybody here is positive and that's what we try to keep because that's bikers helping biker. That's what the real yes, biker sir. community is about. It's not a bunch of negativity and trolls and it's not some stupid Harley forum that you guys are all familiar with where you don't know who's giving you advice and there's guys bashing each other because he goes by Torch Torch Man 134 or whatever you know you don't know who those are in those forums so uh, yeah yeah keeping it real lurchy mm. what shall we uh, call to action mm. I will tell you guys just real quick and y'all know that we are continuing to expand the Law Abiding Biker store because we've completely revamped it. We are adding um, new stuff as we can. Um, I know Goat right now is working on uh, revamping all the uh, Vance and Hines stuff, although we already had it in there. This one? Number six. Just tell me one. which one it is. Am- Amazon. Open up the Amazon. Okay. We haven't done that in a while. I'm looking for it. It's the very bottom one. Uh, but goats, uh, go- yeah, goats redoing all that stuff, so it'll be a little bit more organized. So keep checking back the Law Abiding Becker store and uh, check it out. Yeah, uh, the complete overhaul. Uh, if you can't, uh, it's on your budget to be a patron uh, or give donations. Here's something easy that you can do. There's, there's no cost to you whatsoever, but we get a little kickback. It's uh, the Amazon affiliate. So go onto our webpage, lawbodybiker.com forward slash store, and uh, click through to our Amazon page, bookmark that bad boy, and call it Lab Amazon, whatever. There's no additional cost, and each time you go through and uh, make a purchase, we get a little taste. There you go. Kickback. Nice. Lawbodybiker.com forward slash Amazon, and then just, yep, like he says, bookmark it. It says Lab Help or something. Doesn't matter what you buy. Doesn't matter if you buy doohickeys. Doesn't matter if you buy new Butt underwear. Plugs. Doesn't matter. Butt plugs, who cares? We get a kickback for it. Thanks, guys, for being here. Thanks for uh, the patron members for being in the live chat. We love having you here, and uh, we're going to upload the next episode for you real soon.